Hey friends, so I hope you're doing well. I've been working on my setup and I have my mini PC up and running on my scope. I don't have it out yet, it's still inside and I'm working on some of the final things for preparation to get it back out here. Hopefully it's just gonna be a couple more days. But today I finished up my dark frames. It was a 20 hour process of all the dark frame images and that completed successfully. I created a template of a dark library uh, in Nina, and I'm gonna make that available to you free on my website, and it'll be a link down below. So I wanted to show you creating the dark frames and how I did it, and uh, just give you a quick review of the template that I created, and then I was gonna run you through creating a dark frame master in Cyril so that you have a dark master that you can use in all of your image processing for the next six months. So anyway, if that's interesting to you, stick around. My name is Doug, and this is Astro AF. All right, I had to move inside. It was so bright outdoors that I couldn't see my screen anymore. Anyway, we'll start out and I'll take you on a quick run through over in Nina on what I did in the sequence tab for creating my dark frames. And I'll show you the template that I created. And that template will be available on my website. Link is down in the description. And you'll be able to download that and use it in your template sequence if you'd like to in Nina. Here, let's go ahead and go over to Nina and I'll show you what that template sequence is all about. Okay, so over here in Nina, I have a nearly blank sequence. What I do have in here is I have a cool camera in the start area and I have a warm camera down in the ending area and that's just my preference. This allows me to make sure I don't forget to cool the camera ahead of time and then if I am doing this, which I most likely would be for dark frames unattended, I want to make sure that if this finishes up while I'm not around, it goes ahead and warms up the camera. And But then what I can do is I can go ahead and load the template that I've created. Now, if you have downloaded the template file that I'm uh, providing on my website, then you'll want to put it in the template location. That's default for Nina. That's located in the in my documents Nina templates directory. I actually created a separate folder here for templates that I intend to share as I create templates, and I think that someone else might like them. I'm going to put them in here and continue sharing them out so uh, and make them available and you know just for fun really. But in that template directory, I've got the shared one, and this is the one that will be available from my website. So I can select that and open it, and that will populate the sequence now. So just a quick top to bottom on this. So the sequence name is Dark Library, and as we come down, I have a couple annotations for instructions on this. Um, this sequence has dependencies for Robocopy and Ground Station plugins. So I'm using Robocopy, obviously, for the file copy from the Windows machine on my telescope over to, in this case, my Mac, where I do my processing. For you, it could be whatever destination that, you, that you'd like to configure. But just so you know that those two plugins are required for this particular template. And then I have another annotation. It just says, hey, ensure that the source and destination paths are configured and make sure that you have that set up from options, imaging, and image file path uh, because your source is going to be pre-populated for you in this source field based on your configuration over in the imaging tab. And then here you'll want to configure your destination in this field and you can click on the ellipsis button here to go navigate and find it. On this Windows machine, I've actually created a uh, shared folder for where I want that to go. So if we look at, on my PC, I have this Astro Share, and this folder actually exists on my Mac, and I have uh, shared that through the network uh, so that the Windows PC can interact with this particular folder. 
So then, continuing to move down, I have another annotation here that just says uh, ensure the recipient is correct and the recipient is for a send mail. As I just wanted to, for in my case, and you, you know, this is optional, you can delete this if you want. I just wanted to send me a mail so that I knew that the dark frame job was starting and just a simple message to that effect. And then we get down into the actual dark frame exposures part. And here I'm just have a pop-up box that comes up and says, hey, ensure that the lens cap is on and the scope is covered as needed for dark frames. And that is a little alert box that'll pop up and you have to click OK in it. And that's just to remind me to make sure that I have the telescope prepared to take dark frames. Then coming down into here, I do have a trigger. It'll let me know if there's any failures and that will send an email. All I need to do is to define the recipient for that. And then it runs into and starts doing the exposures. And you can add or update exposures to the sequence to whatever fits your needs. In mine, I have 50 exposures for each one of these dark frames, running from 30, 60, 180, 300, 420, and 600 seconds. And all of them are dark frames. All of them are one by one binning. My camera is 100 for gain, and it's a 10 for offset. And it is, the filter doesn't matter and no dithering. And then out here is just the progress. So then those will run. And when those get through and complete, then it'll drop down. And I have a parallel instruction set here configured. And that'll do a stop of the robocopy. And it'll do, I have an annotation here just to ensure the recipient is correct again. And it'll send out an email to whatever email address you have configured that the dark library sequence is completed. And with a basically boilerplate message there. And then in mine, I have a warm camera as I showed you before. And so the sequence is completed, the camera will warm up and then it'll be ready for me when I get back there. So anyway, that's the sequence area. Again, you know, I've actually configured this into a template over here and I can just drag my template into the sequence, which is really handy. So whenever I, six months from now, I want to come back and do another dark library, all I have to do is drag that back in and I don't have to recreate all this. So now with that done on the Windows machine, I have a folder set up on my C drive that I have named sessions and the dark library exposures were created here. And so here's all of my exposures for each one of the different exposure links. Then what Robocopy did was copy all these over to my Mac. So if I look at Finder, I've got my dark library here in my Max astrophotography folder, and it copied all of those dark frames over here. So I have them in two places. So that's kind of nice. I've got a backup, at least for the time being. I, I won't keep these on the Windows machine for very long, just for drive space, but I'll keep them there for a little while as I ensure that I have this, because what I'll end up doing is putting these all into a uh, zip archive and, and offloading them onto an external drive, more than likely. Those will go into my uh, 2024 dark frames folder that I'll, I'll use for the next six months. So I've got all of the files now via Robocopy over into my Mac hard drive. And from there, we can start working on them. So I wanted to take a look at working with these in serial and creating a dark master file that you can then use for all of your processing for the next six months. All right, so now over in serial to create our dark masters. I'm currently using serial 1.2.0. So the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and set my home directory. Now what I've done here already is I've created a processing directory that's um, above and adjacent to my darks. And I'm gonna set that processing directory as my home directory. 
that's where I want to put these converted files. So on the conversion tab, I want to go ahead and add the files that I want to um, go ahead and convert. And in this case, I'm going to do the 30 second dark frames and the, the same process will be used for uh, the 60 and you know the other files. So I'll just walk you through the one because it'll be exactly the same. Uh, the only difference being the files that you choose and then your final name for your master. So then I'll go ahead and load up the files. And so I want to back up and go over to my actual dark frames. And I'm going to select all the 30 second images here. And I'll just do a shift select and add those. So those are all my 30 seconds. I'm going to give this a name and I'm just going to call it CONV for convert. Uh, just a note, I'm using symbolic links here because by virtue of having an astro camera, I'm already getting FITS files. I don't actually need to convert them. For that purpose, the reason I'm using convert is because I need a sequence created. So if you're using a DSLR, you'll want to do this to actually convert your raw files over into the FITS format at this point. So you would want to deselect symbolic link in that case. All right, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and click on convert, and this will put all of the converted files into the processing directory, which is set here. And if we go have a look, we can see in processing, we now have all the conversions. So that's cool. And that all, and what we really needed here is up at the top, we've got the sequence file. We can go directly over to the stacking tab at this point. There's uh, no need for any other work on sequence or calibration or registration for dark frames. Running down the list here, so average stacking with rejection is what we want. And we we want no normalization. And we can leave these defaults the same. Uh, Windsorized sigma clipping with sigma of three and three. There's no weighting. And if we come down here, you know, this is where working in a Windows platform for my Astro PC and then working on Windows for processing, I end up in like backslash forward slash hell. So I need to really be cognizant of what slash that I'm using here. And in this case, I want to use a, a dot notation here on this. So this will be dot, dot, and then forward slash on Mac for the file system. On Windows, if you were doing this on a Windows machine in serial, then you'd want to use a backslash here. The reason I'm doing that is what this does is it tells the, the script here that we want to save this up one level. So the dot dot slash says save it up a level from the current location. So the current location is our processing directory. I want to go ahead and save this out here to the dark library so that master file will be placed here and I'll deal with it from that point. So if I go ahead and start stacking, and it shouldn't take long, our stacked fit file is right there. That's our master dark. So what I'm going to do at this point is go into Finder and go to that dark library here, and I want to rename this at this point. And this is going to be my 30 second, 100 gain, minus 10 degrees Celsius master. So now I have this file that I can now use for my dark calibration frames for all of my image processing for the next six months. All right, so that's the entire process, at least mine, for setting up a template sequence over in Nina. Um, again, I've got a, uh, a free template if you want to try it out and modify it, make it yours, whatever you'd like, and hopefully uh, it works out for you and saves you a little bit of time. And uh, certainly if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Then also walking through and creating a dark master, which you know obviously is going to help save disk space over time. You can reuse that file. It's recommended you know, probably around six months to, to go through and create new darks.
then you know I just ran through the 30 second one. You'd want to redo that process for each one of the different exposure links that you took for your darks. And, and that's pretty much it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like and I'd certainly appreciate you subscribing. That would be amazing. So my name is Doug and this is Astro AF.